prayer. Amen and amen. We thank the Lord for today and we give him praise for the gift of life which he's given to all of us to his own glory. And we're going to pray now and go into the series of what we have. Father, we thank you and we bless you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness in us forever. Thank you for this great day you've given to us in the land of the living. Thank you, Lord, for being our Sakura and then our keeper. We give you praise. Lord, we ask that you minister to us through your word this morning. Encourage every one of us. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> amen. This period, uh, we are going to start with the temptation to look at other things that didn't come into the uh, bigger pictures of the things the Lord did, and yet they are very essential, very crucial, because you cannot take one and leave the other one. Because miracles happen quite a lot of them, about 37 times doesn't mean it's more important to the, uh, um, to the book of um, um, Luke chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4, not at all. Uh, Matthew chapter 3, that the parables, he said quite a lot of things in parables, does not make Matthew chapter 5, 6, 7 look little, they are still quite very big. So everything he said is for us to take, for correction, for exaltation, to build us, and then also to show us the way. And then where it needs to rebuke to also rebuke us in his own way. But in all, in all is life eternal. Hallelujah. So everything culminates to life eternal. The best place to be is to be a Christian. So today we're going to start with um, in Matthew chapter 4. We're going to look at temptation of our Lord Yeshua and then we look at the sources and then what's the source and what did the Bible say about it and why did Jesus allow himself to be tempted of Satan he created Satan this from everything written in these scriptures is for you and I to learn he went through those things for us and not for himself because um he, he he has power over him. He will do with him what he likes. But he allowed it so that he can let you and I know that these are some of the things we can go through in life. So that we can learn, we can stand strong in him to his own glory. Amen. In the book of Luke chapter 4, when we read all and we can see there that... Um, the Lord, after praying and fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was taken up to the mountain to be tempted of Satan. And then in verse 3 of Luke 4, And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone to be made bread. Why? Because he was unhungered. Naturally, Fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, no eating, no food, no drink. The person will be famished, absolutely hungry. So it's normal. Most of the things that, you know, Satan tempts us are things that are very close to us. They are our need, what we want, what we love. If you're someone who likes to be respected, Satan will come with all sorts of disrespect to make sure that your heart is torn into pieces. That's him. What else can? That's what he's doing, walking to and fro. If your is gluttony, you love food, you want to die in it. Well, you know what he did to Esau. He will also do it. So the Bible says here he was unhungered. He was unhungered. So what do you think Satan will do? Come to offer him a car? No. Come to offer him a holiday? No. Come to offer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
holiday you go there rest and all that a car yeah you can drive around a house yes it's a dream you can but there was an immediate need and that need at that moment is the bible says he was hungry he was hungry check what is the immediate need right now for all of us and everybody listening to me immediate need right now may be different some people their immediate need is water make sure he doesn't offer you acid to drink and because you're thirsty and because the fluid looks clear you grab it to drink not knowing that it is not water and because you didn't smell it and then you drink don't go there he knows what you immediately need maybe you're looking for a job desperately your yours is job he says okay you're a christian i've got a job to give you and he will give you a job where your conscience will be bruised you will lose your salvation and your peace the next minute all that glitters are no good maybe yours is to pass an exams and he's teaching you telling you how to cheat cheat do this do that you can maybe yours is money and he says is it money you want he says look i've got them plenty i'll tell you things to do to get that money now don't look outside to those in the world look inside to yourself at this time we're all looking inside what is the immediate need what is that thing that satan will go something happened um, last week in the past two weeks and then last week but this weekend okay this past weekend you know was the climax of all the things and i was wondering and i said no and i sent a text and i sent an email and all those things this morning the lord came to speak to me concerning it and i was at peace so much at peace and so much at peace that i said to myself look who am i that god is mindful of me i don't even deserve this grace brother what the lord is doing for us is so much beyond us and he was speaking brethren i found love he loved me this much he should have just come and talked to me and then put me up there and then put me in there he first of all put my heart at peace and then he was speaking say leave this that's okay it's all right look at this in the past look at this in the past look at this in the past it is well brethren satan knows what we need most he needs what we he knows what we care for most and usually they are the point of temptation so the message this morning is watch that's why he says as i said to you watch and pray in all watch may we watch in yeshua's name amen the second one if thou therefore will worship me and shall be thine all this shall be thine what is it that will be this he took him up to a mountain and showed him the kingdom of this world the kingdom of this world now sit down and think about the kingdom of this world all of us have been to one school or the other even if it's just primary school you've been you were taught history history past stories even in our present time is past is gone they are not here here right now we can't see them that's why we're reading them and then we're wondering did this happen did it look all gone he showed him what what will fizzle away what is transient what is today and tomorrow is no more and ask jesus bow this is the way we start thinking what is satan asking me to exchange my eternal life to things that be not initiate at first when you see that thing at present it looks like oh if i don't get it if i don't get it everybody's getting it oh dear why me everybody's looking this way am i the oh i need to do this i need to do that i need to, all those things and he will hype you up potential pressure fire 
and you're not sleeping. You are good. You good. You look to your left. It's that thing. You look to your right. It's that thing. People are talking about it, glorying in it, and you feel like, if I don't do it, I am out. Look very well. He took him to the glory. What glory? The glory. And I was thinking last, you know, week, two weeks ago, and last week with all the storm and then flooding um, threats across Europe and here in the UK and I sat down and I was looking and I went back to look at flood how things people have spent their life doing this past one there was a family right there in Europe they were crying because they have this huge um, holiday place caravan where people come water flushed everything not just flushed destroyed everything and they said all their life gone in three days they can't even they were at the field at the plot looking empty but this is the life but they've spent all of them nothing and you look at when they some flooding you you go back on the internet and you see as far as your eyes can see Water has taken everything, houses, cars, human beings, beds, uh, what do we call them, heads, everything gone. Businesses gone. Brethren, he showed him all these things. What were they? Fashions that were in 1970. You don't talk about it today. Children look at it and they're laughing. They laugh until they're on the floor. They said, What? You mean people who did this? Don't worry. If Jesus tarries, those that will come 20 years ago will wonder how you did it too. So you mean they did this? When you look at the fashions then, it's, it's just hilarious. You will laugh and laugh. You look at shoes. Some of them are looking this way. Yet, during those times, people who wore them thought they were on top of the mountain. And it's nothing. We look at the phones in our hands. Just a few years ago. Look at the first model of the phone you have and look at the one you have now. You are looking at them and you're laughing. The first phone, phone looks like brick. And right now, look at how it's sleeky and uh, sleek and uh, what do you call it again? Um, smart they look. Now that is it. It's all gone. All those things gone. Here. The houses that were built for us living in the UK, some of them built in 1730, some of the houses you could see 14 something, some of the houses 15, 16, and you look at them and you're like, wow, we take pictures and take all those things. During their time, people traveled across the world to come and see this epic building that looks so beautiful. But now, what do they look like? Whoa. It's now history. People now say, how did they live? People want to go into the room. They are now museums to go and see what they look like. You go out there, you look at the ships in the dock. That's now a museum. You can see what they fought the first world war with. And you wondered. If you go to Kent to see the first submarine, it's still there. Look at the submarines we have today. And you wondered, why did they call it submarine? But it was Brethren, it's transient. What is it that you're looking at? The things of this world, the goodies of this world, the dresses of this world, dressing like them, doing like this, doing especially young people, be careful. These things are make-believe. These things are staged. They are not real. Be yourself. Be who God wants you to be. Because they will come and they will go. And most of these things have taken away the natural, the natural talents and giftings and then dominions God has given. A lot of people are not themselves because from childhood they borrowed and borrowed and learned and relearned that their natural self disappeared. They don't even know themselves. What they see in themselves is one person or the other. This is all very there. We can see them. So please... This is still there. The Lord allowed this to teach us today. To tell us that, look, you need to resist it. Don't allow it. Don't allow that lady out there to tell you that the way God made her is the best. Therefore, you have to look like her and you'll be in trouble. 
I mean, you send yourself to early grave because you're going to put on things to your body, eat certain things, walk in. By the time you walk in a certain way, it may be fine while you're young. Once you hit 35, you'll find out that you have rubbed those but those joints and then rub them out of the way by 40 you are now doing this the pain has started when did you get it you didn't walk the natural way god has made you you borrowed another person and then you want god has made you you are looking big and so beautiful and he said no i must look tiny like an ant carry on when the time comes you will like you seek for life and life says but you abused me you didn't want me so I will have gone. You literally destroyed it. And if you're tall, don't seek to be short. And if you're short, don't seek to be small. You are the best the Lord has made. Hallelujah. You are the best. There's no to you at all. I keep saying it. Look at yourself in the mirror. And when you're looking intently, you will see the beauty of in him, in your life. He created you in his own, for his own good pleasure. Not for anyone. So don't let anyone determine for you what to wear, where to, what to look like, and what. Reject it at initial. And then be to yourself. Don't let anyone dictate to you what it should be and what it should not be. Because their mindsets are weird. If somebody gives you the philosophy that certain people are supposed to live and others are supposed to die, you'll be in trouble. If somebody gives you the philosophy that you need to do this so that some will be impoverished, so that they can serve the others, you'll be in trouble. You will not please God. And this is the mindset of the world, covered in deception. And all they are doing is wickedness. Be who God has made you to be. The thought temptation again. And then he said to him, it is written. See, he took him again and set him on a pinnacle. And said to him, fall off. When you fall, he will send his angel charge over you. Now look at the Lord. Beautiful. He spoke to the people out there who are quite very immature. He spoke to those who are mature. And then in the world, and now he's speaking to believers. The Lord is speaking to believers. Satan knows that you and I love the Lord. We have the scripture. We read it. It's still from the same scripture we read that he will come to make a mess of us. Look at what he said to him. It is written. And he says here, he will send his angels charge over you. How many of us Christians born again have listened to the enemy? quoting the scriptures for us. He will ask us to do foolish things and use scriptures. And say, after all, the Bible said this and said this. And because of that, you held on to it. You weren't deserving. You didn't hear the Lord out. May the good Lord help us. This is very tricky. Both to you and I, very, very tricky. Sometimes he will come to make you more Catholic than the Pope. Oh, you don't rebuke evil. Oh, the Bible, remember the Bible says, rebuke not an elder in, 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 in openly. So just keep quiet. Just keep quiet. Don't talk. And the elder is in the church committing sin. The elder is in the church showing bad example. And you only took that scripture and you forgot what Paul said to Timothy. When anybody rebuke in front of all so that others can learn. You will not balance the scriptures. You pick out the one you like. He may come and say to you, Oh, um, you're, you're a, a woman of God. You're a deity and a miracle. The Bible says that the miracle which he did, that you shall do two or three times. And God has not given you the gift. He didn't ask you. And you go out there and you're trying to show off. Oh, they don't bury that person. He must rise today. You live. If his time is finished, and he's gone. He'll be gone. Our part is to pray. But let the will of Elohim be done. And what he has done, we put ourselves right under him. Subject to say, thank you, Father. For us, this is what we would have loved. But let your will be done. Some people have made a mess. And they're going there for chests of miracle because the Bible says, greater things you will do than I have done. And because of that, they're going to act in what the Lord has not called them. 
Some of them, some people want to be God themselves instead of actually standing for the truth, re rebuking the truth. They said, oh, he was merciful. You didn't read Matthew chapter 23. If you have read it, you would have known. If you have read, they read the Bible up and on, all of them. And also read Paul the Apostle, Reverend, let's stand strong. Make sure Satan doesn't use the scriptures. This is where I'm coming. He will tell you, oh, have faith, have faith. The Lord will do it. Oh, why not have faith in the Lord? Have faith and you close your hands and then put them in one go. You are not going out. You are doing nothing. No, it will come to you. The Bible says a little sleep, a little slumber, so shall poverty come. Because they don't. The Bible says, whatever thy hand find it to do, do it with all thy might, with all thy strength. Don't be lazy about it. Don't wake up in the morning and you stretch your legs and you're lazy and you say, I have faith. God will do it for me. Don't be a student and you're not reading. You're not studying hard and you say, oh, God will do it for me. No, don't. Because you can't use scriptures to do what? Support laziness and lousiness and then lack of thrive in life. Don't do that. It will bring a reproach. To the name of the Lord. Satan has ways of bringing, using scriptures. Especially when it's convenient, we use one. When it's not convenient, we use the other one. May we today be those that the spirit of the Lord will use. We will stand strong on what is the word saying. What is the Lord saying? And not what Satan is saying because he will bring scripture. He knows the scripture. You know that. If he could use it on our Lord, Yeshua, Jesus, who are you? Who am I? Who do you think we are? He will. And he does that every day. Every day. But when we come down, we will see what the Lord is saying. When we are quiet, may the Lord give us a quiet spirit. May the Lord give us the grace to think things through. May we give us the grace to be discerning and to remain in his will, in all that we are doing. These are, he came to the Lord and then says, in his hands he shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt do what? Strike thy foot. He knows. He's written because he's talking about Psalm, sorry, Psalm 91. That's what the Bible says there. He will, you will let, or you, the Lord will keep us. He will shield us. And then he has, he, the Lord knew that this is not God speaking. He's Satan trying to quote Bible. Let's be very careful. Let's go on into the Lord. Let's hang on to him so that he can guide us, so that he can lead us, so that it's not about we picking the one we like, using it when we like, but balancing it at all times. So brethren, we can see here that Satan is the chief agent in all these things. He's the, only, he's the one. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, he was the one. The Bible says that now Satan was more subtle. He's very subtle. The serpent was more subtle. Satan came to Eve. He's the source. And engaged him in conversation. Engaged him in thoughts of the heart. In the thoughts of the mind. That's why the Bible, Jesus says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Because it's what is going there. Satan engages well in the thought when you are sitting this way. Even the people of the world have an adage, an idle man is the, is the devil's workshop. When you are on your own, what is going on in your mind? What is going on? Resist steadfastly. And that's why the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 2, and be ye renewed in your mind what he's speaking. He does speak to every one of us. Will he speak? Yes. You can't say, oh, Satan cannot speak. He will. But it's the grace to resist what he's saying. The grace to see that this is coming from Satan. Ooh, I catch you. You can't have your way. No, Satan, you cannot do it. This is where the point is. And he came to Satan, to stand Eve, sorry, engaged her in conversation. 
for one day. He can engage you for one day, two days, three days. If he didn't get you, he'll give you a little break and come back. He doesn't give up. If he doesn't get you in one year, two years after, he's still that. Three years after, he plans it and he walks towards it. He can even get one to start working on it. And you wouldn't know that you're not according to the will of God. You're not doing what God wants you to do. And then he will bring it from stage to stage and stage, stage by stage. And at the end of the day, you're giving testimony, not knowing that he gradually took you to the cliff to push you down. That's him. He's wicked. He engaged Eve in that conversation. And what is the conversation? What the Lord said to him. What has God said to you? I wish above all things that you may prosper in good health, even as your soul prospereth. And Satan is saying, Allah, that eye, hmm, it will get blind in four days. Now, can you put this in it? Put this in it, put this in it, put this in it, taking away your faith. And then at the end of the day, those things you have put into that eye is the thing that will blind it. He will come and say, no, you need to do this. You need to do that. You need to help yourself. What has the Lord said to you? It may be a plan of what the Lord has given to you. Claire, you know it. Did you hear from the Lord? Yes. Is it what the Lord said to you to do? Yes. But is how you carried it out. What is the activities in there? What are the things you, that, that constitutes what the Lord? God wants you to bring. Make sure Satan doesn't bring corruption. Make sure this Satan doesn't take it away from the original purpose from what the Lord wants it to be. Because he will engage in conversation. He is the he is the he's a he's deceptive. He is very deceitful. That's what he is to take people away. He engaged her and says, Did God said? Yeah, God said, if I eat it, I will die. Are you sure? Thou shalt not surely die. That was it. Are you sure? No, if the day you do this, that's the day your eyes will be opened. That's how people have gone into danger. So many things in life. Oh, other people are watching it. Why not watch? That's how you got into trouble. You have not come out for life because you put your eyes in there. Some people are slaves today. Some people can't even perform. Some people can't even, you know, come out of it because of the things they've wrapped themselves out. And now it's like, who will deliver them? People who have gone into saying dirty things on internet. This is only looking. Maybe as a student, as a young person, you say, oh, let me see. And that is it. But today, we can say no more. We know the source. Therefore, absolute and total rejection. Some people have gone out there just in a party. And they said, no, try it. It doesn't matter. Nah, nah, nah. Therefore, it doesn't. You know? And they said, what? And just one tablet, one drink, one putting it to smoke, and that's how life and future has been ruined. All it takes is once. Some children have tried drugs, and that's it. And they're hiding it now. They can't perform. Their concentration is not there. Their mind are all out there. And they keep hiding it from parents until one day. You see, they're not performing in school. They're not doing because they're engaged in all that things. Today, you can say no more. It can happen to anyone. It can happen to adults. In so many things, businesses you've gone into, and set and say, oh, it doesn't matter. Go into it. It will bring money. And with that money, you can pay your tight. And it takes you into a business that you cannot be happy to tell us what you're doing in that business. The business takes you out from Bible study, takes you away from church, keeps you traveling across the world, exposes you to certain things. You don't know where you are anymore. These things can happen to anyone, brethren, even in ministry. It can. Just keep thinking. I can keep naming and naming and naming. But to you, what are the things around you that Satan can lay hands on? 
If you love shoes, he will give you shoe. And it becomes an idol. All your life you shoot, shoot, shoot. You love dresses, he will give you to them. Oh, you have 10 and 50 wardrobes filled with all sorts. And that's it. You stand in front of it, idolizing it. And then the only thing that makes you feel good is when you wear them. He will give it to you. You love to drink. He will give you alcohol until your liver goes to nothing and finishes and is destroyed. And then you are put a thing. Brother, let's be watchful. Let's know that in all these things that our Heavenly Father, He is able to do all things to guide us, to keep us. We're going to continue this afternoon. This is quite very interesting. There's no need rushing it. When actually the things that people have gone into are quite a lot. We need to come out, especially in a time like this. Temptation is all over. The tendency to do it. The law is so pushy. Or you've gone into it. We can start now, before we finish this series, to start praying. To say, Lord, have mercy on me. Father, deliver me. Satan is the chief tempter. All he needed is just one permission. And that's it. If you give him an inch, he takes a foothold. Not even. He takes one mile to wreak havoc. But today, we can say, have mercy on me. I'm resisting. I'm not going to stand. Look from where we read, our Lord Jesus said to him, get thee behind me. And we're going to look this evening, other things, and our responses, what it will be concerning this. May we all be here. We all need to stand strong. We all need to resist him. We all need to push back. Don't worry if he had got you today no more. Don't worry if you have fallen once, two, three, four, even if you've fallen hundred times. Never mind. Today, the Lord will restore as we resist him, as we say, no more. You cannot whisper anything to me anymore. I have found out who you are. I have known the secret. You cannot ruin my life. So, brethren, this is what this message is all about. At the end, it's not for us to cry and say, oh, I've lost this or that. It's for us to arise from wherever point we are and start. God is able to give us the grace. All we need to do is to have a willing heart to drop off things that are not essential, that are, that are injurious to us, that are harmful to us, and then get on with the life. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you praise. Thank you for this wonderful teaching. Thank you, Lord, as we go into it. Speak to us, Lord. Yes, we may have mentioned quite few during the courts this morning. But Holy Spirit, you can minister to every heart, to every individual. Lord, as we have heard and we're making up our mind, Lord, to not to listen to Satan anymore and to repent of whatsoever we've gone in. Precious Father, we ask you to forgive, have mercy, and give us the grace to stand strong. And then bring us back to finish this lesson you have for us. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Remember, our book on his glory goes with us. And then you can say, oh, Pastor Grace, you oh, you are saying a lot about it. Brethren, if the advertisers could continue, email us, text us, send it on, and you open your email all over the whole place until they get us. Why not the word? That's what I ask myself. Why not? I, it wouldn't have gone the much it has it, it has gone if one or two people, but because people were grabbing it, reading, and same testimony across everywhere, then the question is why not throughout the lifeline? So brethren, why wouldn't we? May the Lord give us the grace. Go to www.assuringgrace.org. Share the articles, the book, everywhere. Send the link and let people get it. And read. They will come back to say, 